So we got some pretty interesting news for you guys, including a new MMORPG called Age of Water, Near Reincarnation is finally coming out in Japan, and various leaks from From Software's Elden Ring. Hello everyone, my name is Solomon SK for Coffee and RPGs, where we cover the latest news trends and updates for the MMO and RPG gaming genre. This will be the first video for 2021, and I just want to say Happy New Year's to everybody out there. But we do have a lot of news to go over, so if you guys got your cup ready with your beverage of choice, let's go over these articles together. Cheers to you guys. Consider hitting the subscribe button down below, as well as the bell notification right next to it. Thank you! So let's go ahead and get started with a few articles from MMOculture.com. And the first one here says Grand Saga, new trailer highlights tag, and team gameplay system. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so the reason why... Oh man. They've released like the celebratory music video um, in celebration of, I believe it was 4 million uh, registered players. And um, yeah, just take a look for yourself. I could honestly care less about the lolly, but uh, let's be frank here. Um, <laughs> my Terra Online days, I just had a flashback of those <laughs> with that music video for obvious reasons. So if you're not familiar with the tag team system that they're talking about, it's actually very similar to the way Genshin Impact's combat system plays where you're able to swap between characters. Matter of fact, speaking of Genshin Impact, the aesthetics of this game and the way it looks, it's very similar in that it's going for that anime RPG style and look. And to digress just a little bit, the co-CEO of NPixel ended up giving a free copy to all uh, its employees, which I thought was really cool. But yeah, other than that, we actually don't have a whole lot of information other than the fact that they are still continuing uh, making this game. And it is a cross-platform MMORPG for the PC and mobile platform. And uh, I did a top 25 MMORPG for 2021 and beyond list earlier this week, and I regret not putting this game. For whatever reason, it just never occurred to me uh, to put this game in there i just completely forgot about it but if you want to take a look at that video i'll have a link to that in the form of a card it's at the upper right hand corner if you want to take a look and another game that i should have included in my top 25 list but i didn't because again completely forgot about it in their next article it says that project bbq more details for the mmorpg based on the dungeon and fighter revealed and again to sound like a broken record player this is another game that's actually looking very similar to genshin impact in that it has that same sort of anime rpg look and style and feel but if you haven't heard of Dungeon Fighter and you're from the Western Shores, I can't really blame you considering that this game is wildly popular, but only if you're really in Eastern and Southeastern Asia. Matter of fact, if you take its player base uh, for its entirety of its lifespan, it's actually under a billion players. I think the latest numbers had it at up to 700 million players for this game. Again, that's everybody from China, South Korea, Taiwan, Japan, the Philippines. It's just crazy popular over there, but just never really caught any traction here. Anyways, it does go on to say that a new cinematic trailer was released for Project Barbecue or BBQ. I don't know why I called barbecue as well as some, maybe I'm hungry. I don't know. Anyways, as well as some background settings, while Project BBQ uses the same worldview as Dungeon and Fighter, it's actually set in a parallel universe where the fates of key characters and enemies are a bit different. And as always, I have the trailer playing it right now and you can take a look for yourself if you wanted to get into it or not. Me personally, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Not as excited as some of the other MMORPGs out there, but in any event, this game does show a lot of promise in my opinion, especially if you're a big fan of uh, games like Genshin Impact. Again, I don't know if this is going to be a cross-platform uh, sort of MMORPG. I'm guessing it will, considering Dungeon and Fighter is a pretty big game on the mobile platform itself. But again, you know, that's all speculation on my end. But uh, let me know down in the comment section below what you expect of this game to be like, especially if you are a Dungeon and Fighter fan. And in their next article, it says that Age of Water explore and survive the massive ocean in the upcoming new MMORPG. Now, this game is actually being developed by a company called Gaijin Entertainment, the same developers of War Thunder in partnership with Three Whales Studio. Now, what's really interesting about this game is that it's set in a post-apocalyptic water setting. So think of something like the movie Waterworld with, I believe, Kevin Costner. 
And the first alpha test for this game will begin soon. If you click on that link, you could actually sign up for the alpha tests if you wish. And I'll have a link to that down in the pinned comment section below if you're curious yourself. Don't click on the link yet. Watch the video first through its entirety. So helps my watch time. <laughs> Anyways. And it goes on to read that the residents live in cities built upon whatever urban structures remain above the water surface, including skyscrapers, rooftops, and other giant statues. Take control of a motorboat and travel between settlements, fighting pirates, excavating the remains of a lost civilization from the depths of the ocean, and transport valuable goods whilst discovering whether the mythical land still exists. And me personally, I'm actually very interested of how this game will play out. I can't wait to be able to play this game considering that it actually does something so different from your stereotypical MMORPG. So me personally, after watching the trailer and reading this article, I am very interested in this game considering the fact that it's doing completely different from your stereotypical MMORPG. Now we do have the likes of Sea of Thieves, which is a very awesome game. Not really my cup of tea personally with the whole pirate theme and everything like that and the Aesthetics of the game is a little bit too cartoony for me as well, but something like this I could probably get behind considering, again, a post-apocalyptic uh, seafaring MMORPG. I don't think anything like that's been, ever been made as far as I can tell, so that of in itself makes me really interested in the game because, yeah, it's just so unique and so different, so... Anyways, if we do get more information about this game, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button down below as well as the bell notification icon so I could keep you guys posted on all things to come. Now let's go ahead and switch gears and head on over to MassivelyOP.com with their new article here that says NCSoft announces plans to release mobile MMO Blade and Soul 2 in 2021. I won't spend a whole lot of time with this one considering it's not really my forte to cover mobile MMORPGs, but I was a huge fan of the first one on the PC. I still have a lot of fond memories with that game, and I would play it if there were only more hours in a day. And it does go on to read here that what's perhaps the most interesting of note here is that the trailer came out not from Korea, but the Facebook posts from NCSoft's Western facing account, which seems to suggest that this will be a global launch rather than just solely from South Korea alone. And in their next article, I generally don't do articles or go over updates that are very small. You know, I would prefer to cover the big updates or else I'd be making 30 to one hour uh, videos, which I just don't have the time for, but I decided to cover this because I found it a little interesting. And it does say that Astellius Online's patch tomorrow lets you break down mounts while adding a daily login rewards. And it goes on to read that normally you might assume that this would involve a fair amount of blood and organs, which admittedly that's the first thing I thought. But uh, in this case, it gives you crafting materials to get another shot at a mount that you would prefer. Oh, as well as the sting of letting a mount know that you didn't want it if that bothers you. So think of all your favorite mounts and all your MMORPGs, whether it might be a horse or a dragon or a little sheep or whatever it may be. And uh, yeah, just kind of disenchanting it or dismantling it for other parts, if you will. <laughs> and in their next article, it says that Fractured welcomes you to a free end of the year PvP playtest. In this public playtest is free for everybody, not just for the backers, and it will run from December 30th to January 3rd. And basically, like it says here, this is to test out the PvP aspect of the game. And it goes on to say that the criminal system will be live only without the bounty hunting uh, system as well as the jail systems. Most existing abilities have been changed or rebalanced. Other than the stress testing game servers, our aim here is to get much as much feedback, excuse me, as possible on PvP balancing so that we can have that in a good state by the start of the winter alpha. Switching gears again here, we head on over to MMORPG.com for a few articles and it says here that just simply log into Fantasy Star Online 2 and receive 1 million XP. Now I don't know if that's a lot of experience points considering there's other RPGs out there where if you kill a little critter it gives you half a million XP so uh, again I don't know if that's uh, significant but you could actually log in multiple times until now and January 5th, according to this article, and the rewards include 1 million XP every day you log in, so it's multiple times. And I thought this was really cool. In their next article, it says that you'll be able to create jobs for other players 
in Dual Universe in 2021. I think that's probably one of the few things that you don't get to do in a lot of sandbox RPGs and MMOs out there is to create jobs or even quests for other people to do so then that way you know it's a win-win situation but again I don't know if that necessarily means quests because quests you know when you think of that word you have a preconceived notion of what that entails but this might be just maybe a job that you need to get done maybe a one or few times that people could choose to leave it or to even take it. And yeah, this article does go on to say that if you want to take a look at the three minute video uh, to see like sort of all the new things that they have in store for 2021, I think it's definitely worth taking a look if you're into sci-fi MMORPGs. Uh, but it does go on to say that, for example, you'll be able to create jobs for other players through the use of the new mission system. You could also expect new environment graphics. Also on the horizon for next year include Territory Wars, a voxel editor of sorts, Star Stargates, excuse me, as well as new solar systems and more. And this is for the Ashes of Creation fans out there, and I know there's a lot of you out there. And in their next article, it says that following Ashes of Creation's pre-test, Stephen Sheriff talks potentially opening up Alpha 1 sales again. And it goes on to say that Intrepid Studios ran a four-day pre-test last week for Ashes of Creation where thousands of players took part in testing the game in a limited capacity ahead of the Alpha 1 test that is planned for April. And the players were able to test out three different classes as well as the character progression up to level 10 as well as a level 10 boss fight. There are more pre-testing that are scheduled with the next one being on February. And according to Steven himself, that uh, the possibility of Alpha 1 sales may be in the future, considering that pre-test is a big factor when it plays into upcoming additional sales. Hey, you can't blame them. If you get more people to fork over more money to fund the game to make it even better, perhaps, then so be it then. And let's go ahead and cover a few articles from Gematsu.com. And the first one here says that Yeast 6, the Ark of Nepishtim, coming to iOS and Android in 2021 in Japan. And hopefully we also get it here in the Western shores as well. And in their next article, it says that Near Reincarnation launches February 18th in 2021 in Japan. Near Automatic Collaboration event announced. And yeah, it just goes on to say that the command action RPG Near Reincarnation will launch for the iOS via App Store and Android via Google Play on February 18th in 2021 in Japan. So for those of us in the Western shores, we'll have to wait just a little bit perhaps. And that pre-registration is available right now, especially if you're the lucky few who are able to understand Japanese. Uh, unfortunately, I don't. So let's go ahead and change things up a bit and move on to altchar.com. The first article here says that the new Elden Ring leak reveals interesting gameplay details. And again, take everything with a grain of salt uh, as these are just leaks right now. But according to this article, it may seem to be a little bit more legit than the other leaks that we had in the past. The original content of the leak has been removed for obvious reasons, but according to this article, it was actually a Chinese Dark Souls content creator who first came out with it. And it does go on to say that the world is based on the world tree from Norse mythology called the Yggdrasil. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, so I do apologize. And also references some elements of Celtic mythology. The gameplay is also similar to Dark Souls, and that's not a surprise or not even a bad thing in my opinion. And it's also reported that the map is definitely larger than Dark Souls as well. The game development stage has also been completed in the first half of 2020 and right now they're just trying to polish it. Now the rumors stating that this game actually might be coming out in 2021 seems to be more solidified in my opinion but I'll definitely keep you posted as we get more information next year or rather this year now. <laughs> And continuing on with further leaks, we actually do have one for the WoW Classic servers, and it looks like the Burning Crusade expansion might be coming to it pretty soon. And it does go on to say that it looks like Blizzard are set to host World of Warcraft the Burning Crusade beta test sometime in mid-February of 2021, while the official global release is scheduled for May 4th of 2021 as well. Now, the leaker in question goes by the name of Stay Safe TV, who is a YouTuber. So if you want to check out what's going on, I'll have a link to the channel down in the pink comment section below if you're curious to look. 
And lastly, we have one article from PCGamer.com, and it says here that class action suit filed for CD Projekt investors over Cyberpunk 2077. And it goes on to say here, and I'm not going to really get into it, but just know that primarily the suit alleges that false or misleading statements were made about Cyberpunk 2077 being playable on the current generation Xbox and PlayStation system. So there you have it. And that concludes today's episode of MMO and RPG news updates and commentary. I really do appreciate it if you made it with me so far. And if you feel as though I have earned your subscription, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below as well as the bell notification icon right next to it. I hope everybody is doing really well. I hope that, you know, you guys have a wonderful 2021. I know a lot of people are memeing about how terrible 2020 was. And so I hope that is the case. I hope things do get better. But in any event, I will finally let you guys go. Hope you guys have a blessed night and a wonderful 2021. And I will see you guys next time. Cheers, everyone.